If you want to lead people on trips in the woods and waters of Maine, you have to be ready for any situation, including rescuing a capsized canoe. This is a practice scenario, but knowing how to respond is critical for a registered Maine guide. It's one of the many skills taught at Maine's Outdoor Learning Center in Mattawamkeag, where these women start their day. Registered Maine guide testing is probably the toughest outdoor test in the nation. John Rogers runs the center with his wife, Tammy. It's one of about two dozen organizations in Maine that offer guide training. The eight women here are going for their recreational certification, and to earn it, they'll have to pass a 100-question written test and an intense oral exam. You sit before an oral board, an oral board that's going to question you probably for a good hour on uh, map and compass skills and a lot of scenarios. <laughs> to prepare for the exam, they spend a week training from breakfast to bedtime. As they sit down to French toast, Rogers quizzes them on everything from naming the main state flower to what a red buoy indicates. It's on the left side of the channel. What side of the channel? I'm not a big fan of asking questions that I know you know the answer to. Quite the opposite. Because that won't make good guides, he says. It requires deep knowledge and experience. These women are more than halfway through their training. They've been practicing navigation, knot tying, and first aid. Today, they're going to head to the river to practice canoeing and rescues. They take advantage of calm water at the beginning of the trip to work on different paddle strokes. This is the backwards J. And learn polling, a traditional technique that tests their balance. Just get a feel for how it's standing in a canoe. This is the first time some have ever tried it, but Lillian Frank of Ellsworth says being with a group of women makes it less intimidating. It does take some of the pressure off when you're just surrounded by all of these super empowering women who are just, you know, 100% like they're cheering you on. And you don't get that always, you know, with co ed groups. Frank is studying oceanographic science at Bowdoin College, where she's also active in the outing club. She hopes to combine her interests into a career. And she convinced her mom, Gretchen Wisner, to sign up too. I'm, I'm more cautious as I've gotten older, and I think this will give me some confidence. Other women are making or contemplating a career switch from jobs in real estate and accounting so they can spend more time outside. Nikki Lewis of Bangor is an artist. She wants to lead art trips that help people reconnect with nature. We get further from it every day. The more technological advances we have, the less time we spend outside, the more uncomfortable we get. These women all want to help others feel comfortable in the outdoors. But to do that, they first need to step out of their own comfort zones. I've spent a lot of time on the water in boats. I'm actually a marine scientist. That's my profession. Um, but I haven't run a river in a canoe. As the women run a set of rapids, they practice reading the river, recognizing patterns that indicate where to go and obstacles to avoid. They navigate the rapids successfully, including Casey Frederick of Skowhegan. She's an avid backpacker, but was apprehensive about her abilities with other skills. I think what I've liked most about this week is feeling empowered. There's been a lot of things that I was really nervous and intimidated about coming in, so specifically map and compass and a lot of the skills that we had to execute today. You know, a lot of people come and they expect, like, it's going to be, oh, there's grilling and it's going to be this drill sergeant type mentality. Okay, so Master we'll Maine guide Greg Sarnacki has been teaching at the center for nearly 20 years. You know, the hands-on portion makes everything fun and you start to learn things without even realizing that you're learning them. Karen Mayers says some practical experiences that are initially exasperating are ultimately the most satisfying. What's been the hardest part about this week? A uh, stupid fire. <laughs> Making a fire from scratch with birch bark and a flint was extremely hard. Yeah, and, but we did it and we all did it. What's been the best part? Uh, making the stupid fire work. They cap off this river day with another challenge, tea rescues. Where they ride a capsized canoe and help its occupants get back in. Beyond the technical skills, Tammy Rogers says this week-long training instills in these women something else that's essential to being a main guide. They're all together for a whole week. And I think that camaraderie uh, instills what a guide needs to be with all walks of life. 
So you're stepping in with people that you don't know, just as you would as a main guide, and you learn to know the ins and outs of a, of a person. I think it's a connection with people. You have to be able to go out and bond with people and you know, control what you can control. You can't control the weather. You can't control the resource. You can control the food. You can control your personality. You can control the fun that you have. So what do these women say it takes to become a registered Maine guide? Grit. Yeah, I think grit and uh, curiosity. And one more thing, says Karen Zimmerman of Otter Creek, who's coming out of retirement to become a guide. Passion. Just wanting to do it. I think the skills are things that anybody can acquire, but wanting to share this amazing planet that we live on with, with other people and have them appreciate it, maybe. For Borealis, I'm Patty White. Guide School! <laughs>